YouTube. I hope all y'all are having a blessed day. We are here with today's project and it is going to be a quilt along and it's going to be a quilt as you go pattern. And we are going to be using all of these amazing fabrics that I got from India. I found an Etsy shop that I can't stay away from. She is so kind, so sweet. She gave me a really good deal and I'm going to share the information below. So if you do decide to go ahead and buy something from her, please do tell her. You can send her a message in Etsy and you can let her know that I sent you to her shop and I wanted to give back because she gave me a special deal outside of Etsy, so I can't leave a review. So if you would like to latch on to some of these amazing fabrics, go visit her shop, purchase something from her and let her know that I sent you. Let's get into it. So here is our pattern and I'm going to be giving this one away for free because there are no templates involved. It's just squares and rectangles. And here is the fabric we are going to be using. This comes from India and it is all block prints. And wow. That is quite the stash. I asked for 300 squares at 10 inch and we are having a thunderstorm. So if I suddenly disappear, it's because we've lost power. Oh my goodness. These are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to tear into these. So there we have all of our fabrics. And for something that came from India, this arrived in less than a week. So these were all cut and shipped and arrived within a week. So, and this is a very nice lighter cotton. It's not gauzy at all. It's a very nice fabric. Oh, these are just very, very nice. Let's see these. We've got stripes, we flowers, all sorts of great stuff here. And they are hand cut, so you might have things like this, but it's very, very nice. Cheetahs. Yes siree, I do like this a lot. All right, and now we're just going to go over the pattern, which you can download for free on my website. Don't mind my nails, I'm in between manicures. So we're going to review the pattern and that will be the end of this video. And then for the next video, we will be cutting all of our fabrics and then we will begin sewing them all together. Okay, so I'm, this is another quilt as you go pattern and it's called Mosaic Madness. The supplies that you're going to re need are a large assortment of fabrics, scrappy or coordinated. So if you wanted to make a, oh, give me a topic. If you would like to make a kitty cat quilt, well, then you would need a large assortment of kitty cat fabrics. And you will also need a large assortment of batting, scraps or new, whichever you like. And you're going to need neutral or contrasting thread, whatever floats your boat, whatever thread you wanna use, you can use. You will also need rotary cutter and mats and rulers and you'll need a sewing machine unless you're going to do this by hand and if you're doing it by hand you just take a chunk of these fabrics and a chunk of batting and you stuff it in your purse and your needle and thread and scissors and you would just start sewing by hand you will also need a seam roller and i'm giving you a link to it here and you will also need some quilting sewing clip those little clothespin thingies and then of course you're going to need your general sewing supplies. So that would be your thimble if you're doing handwork, your scissors, bobbin thread, whatever, whatever general sewing tools and supplies you normally use. The blocks are constructed using the quilt as you go method and you have an option of sewing it together in a block form. This was my test block. So you can sew it together into little piles like that and then sew them into blocks like you see here. 
or you can do something which I'm going to do and which I think is going to be more creative and more fun. I am not going to make blocks and then sew the blocks together. I am going to start in the middle and I'm going to be adding some pieces and then I'm going to stick another piece off this way and I'm going to sew that on and then I'm going to sew another piece this way and it's going to be cattywampus and I want my quilt to end with kind of a sawtooth border. Your border would go like that and you're just going to keep on sewing things on until you are tired of sewing things on and your quilt will be done. Now this was a test so please excuse the sloppy stitching. Again you don't have to make blocks if you don't if you don't want to. If you just want to sew tiles together randomly in a haphazard fashion and end with a zigzag border, you can do that. So you're going to be needing two sizes of tiles. You will need for your top fabrics, you will need a three inch by three inch square and a three inch by six inch rectangle. And you will be making basically you will be making a, a large pile of tiny quilts if you're doing it piecemeal one you won't get bored and two it goes quickly you get into a rhythm and you can start popping these things out like uh, let's not say potato chips let's say popcorn at the movies You can go through the whole bucket real quick if you're not paying attention. So you can go through the whole pile of fabric real quick if you're not paying attention. And again, I tell you that alternatively, you can just grow the quilt out of the center organically and you can leave the edges uneven. Okay, this pattern has a lot of photos because I am a visual learner. It is 10 pages long. There are tons of photos and a lot of detailed instructions and this will prepare you for my next project which will also be quilt as you go and that will be a paid pattern because it requires templates and it's going to require a much more commitment to, to do but we'll go over that at another time. The quilt fabrics for the front of your quilt are three inch by three inch and three inch by six inch. Fabrics for the back of the quilt are four and a half by four and a half and four and a half by seven and a half. You have to decide how you want to proceed and if you want to do a solid back so the back of the quilt will have all it won't be colorful like this. It will be all, say, this color here. So if that's the case, and you would cut a very large pile of four and a half by four and a half inch and a very large pile of four and a half by seven and a half inch squares and rectangles. So if you are using yardage to cut your tiles, the fabrics for the front of the quilt, you can cut them three inch by width of fabric and then cut them down further to three inch by three inch and three inch by six inch. And for the backing, if you're going to be using yardage, you are going to be cutting four and a half inch strips and then sub cutting them down to four and a half by four and a half inch squares and four and a half by seven and a half inch rectangles. If you're using new batting, then you're going to be cutting it in three inch strips and then sub cutting it as you did for the front of the the front fabrics. And you're going to need a lot of these, so cut a bunch. So when you are preparing your pieces to sew, you're going to take a four and a half inch piece of fabric, whether it be a square or a rectangle, and you're going to be laying it face down on your sewing table. So we're going to pretend that that is a square. Just ignore the excess. The reveal of your backing fabric. You're going to put your backing fabric face down and then you're going to take your batting scrap and place that here and then you're going to place your top fabric right side up on top of the bat. And the reveal here should be three quarters of an inch all the way around. So what you're going to do at that point is, and this is very exaggerated because it is not the correct size, what you're going to do is fold this piece up like that until it is touching the smaller square. Then you're going to use that seam roller and you're going to crease this really nice and crisply. And then you're going to fold this up to, to come up over the edge of the fabric and the batting. And then you're going to do the same thing all the way around. 
Okay, so that's how you're going to do this. You can sew this by machine or by hand. And if you're sewing it by machine, you're going to come down to one stitch over this piece here, and then you're going to pivot and you can go backwards three or four stitches and then proceed and you're going to do it all the way around now if you don't like the bulk in the corner you have the option of trimming it but i find that if you trim it you're not going to get as neat a corner i did not trim these i folded these up as a miter and it just looks a little sloppy in my opinion you can snip this corner off and then you can fold it up like this and then fold it like that and then fold it like that. I mean, it is it is a miter, but I, I think it looks a little bit sloppy. So I'm just going to do the straight folds. And when you're done sewing these, sewing this all the way around, you're done. So you toss it in the bucket and you move on to the next one. So these are quilting clips. They're like paper clips or clothes pins or what have you. You fold it up and you crease it and then you fold it up again and you stick a quilting clip on it. And you do that all the way around until everything is folded up. And then you're gonna take one clip off out of your way and you're gonna put your sewing foot down and you're gonna sew about a 16th to an eighth inch away from this edge and just top stitch all the way around. Now you can use a coordinating color, you could do a variegated thread, you could do contrasting thread, you can do whatever thread floats your boat. You could also do this with pearl cotton and do it by hand. You could also use embroidery floss again and do it by hand. So there's endless, an endless list of things that you can do, of options you can do to make this more fun for you. Well, again, once you get to this point, you're going to take one of these clips off and you're going to slip it under there and start sewing. Now, I do want to tell you that for piecing all the tiles together, I find a zipper foot to be very, very useful. Okay, the zipper foot really goes down right on top of this piece that you're sewing down and it holds it down for you. So it gives you a little bit more stability to just make sure that everything is, is going through the machine neatly. When you get to a corner, you're gonna go one stitch beyond this piece here and then you're going to raise your foot and you're going to pivot and remove your clips and continue sewing. Again, if you're doing the straight edge, you're going to do a back stitch for about three stitches and then move forward. Now, if you're sewing blocks together, I'm going to be doing it organically from the center out of the quilt, or you can do it into 12, 12 inch units, or you could do it into 18 inch units. You can do whatever, whatever size you wanna do, you can do anything that is, any block size that you want, you can go ahead and make, but I'm, I'm doing it organically from the center out. Out, you're going to fit your tiles together like a puzzle. That's basically what you're doing. You're fitting this together like a jigsaw puzzle and then you're sewing it down. Now to sew these units together I'm using a wide zigzag. You could also use contrasting thread and a decorative stitch if you prefer. That would certainly be very very pretty. So rather than using a neutral thread and sewing a plain zigzag you could sew a decorative stitch down here. And on my sewing machine, I have a foot that has a plow right down the center. I have a Bernina and it's called 10D. And you can see right here, this plow that goes right down the center of the foot. So you butt up two tiles next to each other up against this plow. Don't shove them together, just hold them together with the plow in the middle and sew the two pieces together. If you're sewing this this unit to this unit, you're going to start here and you're just going to sew it together and this will hold the pieces together. It'll help you keep your your stitch line straighter and a little bit neater. Now if you're doing blocks, you're going to look at this block and you're going to say, all right, what kind of units can I make that will sew together? And you can say, okay, well, here's a long tile and a square tile. And then I can put the square tile up here and the rectangle here, and then that will be wide enough to sew this one on. And then you're doing the same thing over, uh, over here. And then when you're done with these two halves, you're sewing the halves together. And that is the end of the pattern. Again, you can take this on the go. If you like to do hand sewing, grab a bunch of the tiles and the batting, stuff them in a Ziploc bag, stuff them in your purse, and then, you know, take your, take your thimble and your, sew, your sewing needle and your thread and 
go to town. So you're going to read through your pattern and you are going to pick out the fabrics that you want to use and you're going to cut them as the instructions specify and you're also going to cut all your fat all your batting scraps in the same way they're going to be in three inch strips and then they get sub cut to three inch square and then three inch by six inch rectangle when we come back with our next video we will get to sewing these together so this is mosaic madness it is part one and i will make sure that i put that in a playlist i'm going to create a play a quilt as you go playlist that you can refer to and i will also keep the titles consistent so this will be mosaic madness number one all the other videos that we have in this series will be numbered sequentially after that i am very happy with these fabrics they are delightful they don't smell they're soft they are recycled so you are saving them from the landfill etsy store where i got these fabric i will also include a link and if you happen to go there please tell her that i'm a very happy customer and that i shared the link with you all and you too can get some major stacks of fabrics that will work very very nicely for this project and for any quilting project the name of the the store is The Block Prince, and it's a lovely, lovely woman. Her name is Jessmine, and she responds pretty quickly. If you post something to her in the afternoon, she's probably not going to see it until probably, I don't know, early in the morning hours for you, but that's when her day is. Be patient for a response, but she does respond quite quickly. So when next we meet, I'm hoping that you will have picked out your fabrics and gotten them cut into strips and then subcut into the tile sizes that you need. Folks will want to know how, how the visit went with one of my subscribers uh, and it, it didn't it didn't go she was not able to come at the last minute so uh, i'm hoping that she will have some time in the future and she can come and visit that was that was sad but it is what it is you can't you know life life happens and you've got to just roll with the punches i have been very very tired this week i've had absolutely no stamina i've been not making videos because i haven't been up to it i want to thank you all so very very much for watching and subscribing and your comments make my day i get so much joy out of reading your comments on my videos and i kindly ask that you do hit that subscribe button and you ring the notification bell to all so that you are notified when I get when I post a new video please do go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and please do go ahead and leave a kind comment down below I will see you right back here at 70 acres studio next time with the next video in this series I'm really excited about it and I hope you enjoy it and come along with me so you all take very very good care of yourselves you have a very blessed day a very very blessed week ahead I love you all so very much God bless good night Elizabeth good night John Boy.